Hey, Bran here with another Pagan Book Review. This is going to be my second Pagan Book Review about a fantasy book, or a fiction book, I think. Uh, I've done Lenora Henson's uh, novel, and today I will be doing Brendan Meyer's Fellwater. This is a fantasy, a modern fantasy, I would consider it an urban fantasy uh, novel. Book one of the Hidden Houses series. What is this book about? Well, first, let's talk about the author a little. Brendan Myers is a professor of philosophy and an author, obviously. This book is on the title of a novel. He's an author. Uh, and he's a pretty cool guy. I was able to meet him at the Order of Bards of Eights and Druids Gulf Coast Gathering earlier in March. Now, Bellwater is an urban fantasy, a modern fantasy, whatever, about rival houses belonging to an ancient secret society. And the main characters, Katie and Eric, are unwittingly entangled within the this rival, so to speak. And this book is steeped with lore and legend of mythology throughout the world. There's Celtic mythology, Roman mythology, a ton of just even philosophical ideas. If you're a pagan and you like mythology or philo philosophy, you should get this book. Uh, there's a ton of political intrigue in the book too. I mean, there's rival houses. How are there not? How is there not going to be political intrigue? There's a lot, and there's a lot of suspense and mystery in this too. Uh, the pace of the book keeps going and going and going, and you know. You're, you think, oh, at the end of a chapter, I'm going to put this down and read, or read, you're already reading. I'm going to put this book down and sleep when, nope, there's a cliffhanger, there's a twist, something that makes you go, what? Hold on. And you have to keep reading. So if you will not sleep, you will read. I was right. Uh, yeah, the characters in here, I, I really liked the character named Eric. Uh, Katie and Eric, the main characters, are lovers and, you know, you you had to deal with their their you know relationship as well as the relationship between these two rivals and what parts they have to play in this whole thing. But Eric, I really liked Eric. He was kind of the, the unwilling skeptic throughout the whole book. He he always was questioning everything that was happening, and which I kind of I I kind of you know I sympathize with him. Weird things are happening, and he's like, "Why? What's like?" Why is this happening? Like, why should I bother with this? And he would ask the he would ask all these questions, and you know, presenting presented with something unbelievable, he would be like, "I don't believe it. Prove it." And it was just it was just kind of funny to see him play his part in a fantasy novel. Uh, and it's very a very readable story. To me, the way he wrote it. The action scenes, especially, are really written like a movie. Like, you're watching a movie. Oh, you see something? What's that? He, you know, someone pulls a bow and arrow out or something, or there's an explosion, and everything is clear-cut, and you understand what's going on. It's not like watching a Transformers movie or whatever, you know, where it's just like a jumble of stuff going on, you don't know what's going on. You actually are able to decipher everything that's going on, even in a very action-packed scene. And um, for the most part, the whole book's written like that. It's very, very casual, but, you know, you understand what's going on. The only criticisms I have, there are two things. One is the perspective from which the book is told. A lot of people are used to first person. You know, I went to the market. I bought a pound of, you know, chocolate. Or people are used to either... The uh, third person limited, you know, like Jester the Mug went to the market and he bought a pound of chocolate. In his case, probably hot chocolate. Um, but now he only totes pens. And that's kind of third person limited. Brendan seems to walk a very fine line between third person limited and third person omniscient. Where it, it would be, you know, Jester the Mug went to the market and, you know, the 
store clerk, Foo Foo the bunny, saw Jester walking into the market, and Jester is thinking, hey, I'm going to buy that chocolate. So it's kind of a strange balance. I mean, sometimes you'll be following the main character's train of thought, and, she, you know, she might be arguing with a fellow protagonist, and all of a sudden you get a little of the, the fellow protagonist's thoughts or moods or whatever. And it was it was strange. It was definitely not a bad thing. It was just different. Uh, and maybe it actually helped the story along. I'm not sure. The other thing is also insignificant. It's just a few errors, grammatical errors, you know, misplaced punctuation, missing pu punctuation. Just very small things that don't really just tr detract from the story itself. It might be a tiny bit distracting, but, you know, get over it and move on with the story. It doesn't... I don't think you should let technical... Tiny technical issues get in the way of the storytelling itself, because it's a very fun, very complex story, but not too complex. You will be able to understand what's going on. Even when you don't think you will, you know, things will happen in your... Oh, okay. And a really fun thing about this is that, you know, one, book one of the Hidden Houses series, there are other ones. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't read any of them, but the sequel, I think, is called Hollowstone. And there's a third book, and I think there's a fourth book. I think he's coming out with a fourth one, if not the third one, but I'm pretty sure the fourth one is coming out. I'm not sure what the third one's called. I don't even think there's a title for the fourth one. But if you enjoy this, you probably should check out the other ones. But there's also spin-off books based in the world of Fellwater, one of which is A Trick of the Light. Now, A Trick of the Light takes place in the same town Fellwater takes place in, I believe. But you don't need to read Fellwater or any of its subsequent sequels to understand or to read and enjoy this. I read this before I even bought Fellwater. I loved this book. This is actually a novella. It's only 60 pages or something. And it's it's the subtitle's fairy about a fairy tale about knowing. I guess this could be considered a mini review within a review. Uh, Trick of the Light is about an eleven year old kid who gets this magical telescope that sees kind of parallel universes or something. It's a very very interesting imaginative premise and a very interesting and imaginative telling of that premise. I really enjoyed this one. It, this was such a fun read. And I really like the cover. She's like, ooh. I really like the cover of this, too. It has really fun, really cool art. You know, really fits the story. But, yeah. So, if you're interested at all in mythology and philosophy, if you're, you know, especially if you're pagan, you don't have to be pagan to enjoy these books. I'm just a pagan, and I do pagan book reviews, so I'm doing a book review on this. Uh... Check them out. I'll put links to the author's website and links to the book and whatnot, books maybe even, in the video description. So check that out. And I want to let you guys know that another book review, Pagan Book Review, is coming out. It's going to be a special edition kind of. Like, it's not really going to be a book review. It's going to be kind of talk about my favorite book. So yeah. And I would like to let you know, guys, that my new album... Uh... Four Branches is out for pre-order. It's being released on June 23rd, 2015, in case you're watching this in the future. And if you are, it's available now. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to be released soon, and you can, you know, pre-order it if you want. I'll probably make a video about that, too. So, thank you for watching this book review, pagan book review, about Brendan Meyer's Fellwater, book one of the Hidden Houses. Check it out, guys.